Hi, this is Kyle Marshall, aka Against Time with GrinderSchool.com. Uh, today I'll be doing episode two of the Shoving Theory series, uh, which is essentially a continuation of the first episode where we focused on uh, more full handed table shoves, and now we'll be looking at shoves on the bubble, uh, three handed, and also in heads up. Uh, and this will be the nine max sit, uh, single table sit and go uh, that we're working on today. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, as before, I did all of these situations in Sit and Go Wizard, and I used an ICM calculator. Um, and I basically just prepared a number of situations for you, which I think uh, will be really beneficial for viewers. Uh, situations where I think a lot of players will have trouble knowing what to do. Uh, this first situation here is uh, on the bubble. Uh, we are the short stack with eight blinds under the gun. Um, I, I pretty much look at the situation where you have eight blinds under the gun on the bubble being very similar to the situation where you have six blinds under the gun at the full table, where you're really at a, a point of desperation. Uh, you'll be looking to shove essentially any two reasonable cards uh, if you feel that you have a reasonable fold equity, um, just to avoid the blinds hitting you here. Um, just to show you how extreme the situation really is, I chose uh, 10 deuce pseudo, which I think is a pretty extreme example. I expect that most players would fold in this situation. Um, I don't think a lot of players would try to limp here, which is obviously a mistake at less than 10 blinds. But I think a lot of players would fold here, and I wanted to show this to you because this is actually a shove. And you'll see here by the ranges that are posted um, from Sit and Go Wizard that uh, essentially any, um, any suited... Uh, any suited hand with a 10 or better um, is a shove here. Uh, they even say to shove all the way down to king 5. I would say go all the way down to king deuce. Um, I didn't set the edge here to allow for for uh, really a negative edge. I kind of left it with the defaults. Um, and so the result here is actually conservative. I would shove wider than this suggests, uh, but this is just to give you a general idea of the looseness necessary to, to make these adjustments. Um, you'll see that 10 deuce suited uh, even without adjusting the shoving, uh, the calling ranges to be loosened uh, is profitable here. So anyway, we would go ahead and make this shove. Uh, I would suggest shoving probably any face card at all. Uh, you might discard Jack Deuce offsuit through Jack Four offsuit. Um, ten seven here shows as a shove. That's perfectly fine. I would even shove ten six. Um, Almost any any suited connecting hand all the way down to like three do suited here just to avoid the blinds. Uh, and that's a, a good general recommendation I'll make. And this situation is especially good actually because the player in the big blind is the medium stack uh, who will be most likely to try um, to protect their uh, equity in the tournament by folding out here. Uh, it would be a more difficult situation had the big blind been the big stack. Okay, here's another situation for you. We have ace deuce suited uh, on the button. Uh, it's folded to us. Uh, we have 14 blinds. Uh, we're in second essentially right now. Not much of a lead though over the other two players. Um, and so here, uh, my question is, would you make this shove or fold or would you perhaps make a smaller raise or limp? Um, there's actually a couple viable options here. I I really never promote limping on the button if it's been folded to you. I, I think open limping the button is just a mistake in general. Um, you could make a small raise here and you could definitely find some arguments for that. Um, it would allow you to have some kind of fold equity. You could make a small raise here and if someone were to come over the top you could lay it down. Uh, the problem with that is that if you make that small raise and you get flat called by the big blind, which is very possible since he's the big stack, uh, this is a difficult stack depth to play post flop. If you make a C bet, you're not necessarily committing yourself, but then your chip um, stack would be about 10 blinds deep, which puts you equal to all the other players. Uh, and if you don't connect with that flop and, and you're floated there, it would be a really difficult spot to play from. Um, also, if the big blind comes over the top and goes all in, which is also reasonably possible, um, you're really looking at a fold here, and it would be it would be a mistake to call um, with the defensive ICM implications here on the bubble. So, um, you can actually profitably shove Ace Deuce suited here for 14 blinds. Uh, I don't make a lot of 14 blind open shoves. I, I'm more likely to maybe in the cutoff button or small blind. Um, if I'm going to do it, but I don't normally do it. But on the bubble is a special situation where a lot of times you take a small edge and you just shove all in to avoid players being able to come back at you um, because of how ICM works in the bubble. So here I would just open shove this. Um, and this is a list of hands that they say you can profitably open shove here for 14 blinds. Um, it seems pretty good. 
I'd probably add Ace-5 offsuit in here. Um, I'm actually would be happier to shove the Ace-5 offsuit than the Ace-7 offsuit. Um, I like the Ace-Deuce suited range. King-10 is fine. Uh, King-5 suit I think is fine as well. In fact, this whole range looks pretty solid to me. Um, I don't know that I would go in here with a Queen-6 suited. Um, in fact, I probably wouldn't. I would guess that I would fold Queen-6 suited and Queen-7 suited here. Um, add in Ace-5 and maybe a six and then pretty much keep the rest of the ranges is so just some small adjustments that I would make here but otherwise it seems pretty solid um, I imagine they have you shoving it doesn't show it here but um, like probably a 10-7 suited maybe a 10-8 suited 10-9 uh, offsuit probably 9-7 um, suited I doubt there's I doubt 9-8 offsuit is in this range um, in fact 10-9 offsuit might not be in this range if they're cutting it off at jack 10 I would imagine it would be a very borderline hand so it gives you kind of a general idea all the way down to maybe like an 8-7 suited here would be fine. Okay, uh, here we have Jack-10. This is very similar to the previous situation, 14 blinds uh, on the button. Um, there is a little bit of a difference here to know, and it will affect our decision. The first thing you want to notice is uh, we're no longer in second place here. We're in third, but not by much of a margin. Uh, so that's not going to make a huge difference. The big blind is still the big stack, which has remained the same. The, the thing that's really changed here is that the short stack now only has four blinds, and not only that, um, is under the gun. So the blinds are about to move through him again. Um, this is a spot where we really don't want to get involved. Um, as I showed previously, Jack-10 offsuit was a uh, profitable hand to shove open for 14 blinds on the button here. However, in this situation, I would highly suggest not doing so. Um, I would actually recommend the small raise or a fold over the shove here. Uh, I don't think it's even pro yeah, it's not even profitably a shove anymore um, with the, the small blind being under the gun or the, the small stack being under the gun here. So um, you could make a small raise here. It really depends on your read on the players after you. If they're regs, I would just fold this hand because I can tell you right now that if I were in the big blind and a player raised on the button into me in this situation, I would be coming over the top very liberally. Um, probably more than 70% of the time I would just shove here. Um, depending on the player and the button, maybe I would shove any two cards. Um, it's just a great spot to take advantage of, and players who don't play it defensively here are really making a mistake against you. Um, so you could make it like 500 here against players who aren't familiar with how to play this spot of the game and try for a steal. Um, I wouldn't open shove it. Uh, and against regs, I would just fold it would be my recommendation. Again, that's only because of the short uh, stack under the gun who's about to go out here. You really want to preserve your equity. Okay, um, here's another bubble situation for you. Um, looks like the blinds are 100-200 with the ante, and now the ante is not going to be a huge difference because we're only four-handed. And it is folded to us on the button, and we are the big stack. It looks like we have seven deuce off. This is kind of similar to the previous situation I showed you, except for I've changed our position around. Now we're the big stack. Uh, we still have a short stack under the gun who's about to blind out. Uh, and the two medium stacks are in the blinds. This is an example of an any two card shove. Um, the player under the gun has folded out, which means his equity will be preserved no matter what. And he's essentially putting in half of a stack next hand and will probably have to play for his chip life. So this is an excellent any two spot. I would suggest shoving any two cards here against absolutely all opponents, regardless of looseness. Even the craziest loose opponents will not be calling you wide enough here for this not to be a profitable shove. Um, absolutely shove any two all day long in this position like this. Uh, it's really kind of an optimal spot where the players behind you have 13 to 14 blinds and are really looking to protect, protect their chances in the tournament, and the player under the gun is essentially out. And so. Um, even if players are calling you here as loose as like ace five suited, this is still a good shove. Okay, this is a heads up situation. Uh, and heads up, as you all know, at 15 blinds or less, I like to play kind of by the Nash equilibrium. I do make adjustments based on my opponents, but that's a good default uh, start. It's pretty difficult to exploit at that stack size. In fact, it's unexploitable. Um, and so I, I think it's a really good approach to heads up. It guarantees you an edge against players who don't know about it, and you'll at least be playing evil against players who do. Um, so here in this situation, uh, looks like we're uh, first to act. We have approximately, oh, actually exactly 15 blinds uh, before the blinds are posted, and we have 10-8 offsuit. Um, 
This is a spot where really I would suggest making the same play regardless of opponents. There's not a lot of situations where you'll hear me uh, not recommend adjustments based on your opponents, but this is one of them. Um, if 15 blinds deep, uh, you're deep enough that you can make small raises and still fold, um, but it's really unprofitable to put yourself in that position in heads up. And 10 8 offsuit can actually be open shoved according to the Nash chart, uh, well above 15 blinds here. I would just recommend open shoving this hand, just period, against for 15 blinds against all opponents. I think it's a great way to play it. Um, you'll see here there's quite a few hands that can be open shoved this deep, and I would probably open shove them all. Um, the only adjustment I might make at 15 blinds is to kind of mix in a few small raises uh, with some junk hands as well as some strong hands to kind of blend your range here. But this is a hand that's not strong enough to call a raise deal and you don't really want to play post fault, but you can probably shove it. So I would go ahead and do that. Okay, here we're in the 150-300 blinds. Um, looks like we're about 13 blinds deep in the small blind and it's folded to us. And the player in the big blind um, is the big stack here. And we're about equal with the player who's folded out. Um, so really, we can take our own risks here. Not a lot of incentive uh, to not do so. There is a little bit of a bubble between the third place and second place money, of course. And so we'll need to consider that as well. Uh, but it's not a big difference here. Uh, this is close. Um, this is one that if it came up during the game, I, I would hesitate for a second and think about it. It's very borderline, and that's why I chose this hand. A lot of the hands I'll choose will be kind of borderline, so you kind of get an idea of where the ranges fall. Um, this is this is going to be a fold. Um, I thought it might be. Like I said, it's right on the line. It looks like queen eight is a shove here, and I, I believe that seems pretty accurate. Um, that's about what I was, was feeling myself. Um, and this whole range really seems pretty good here. Um, let me look at it and make sure I really feel that way. Jack-7 offsuit is pretty loose, um, just like the Queen-7 here. I might recommend pitching the Jack-7. I would favor the 10-7 even over that because it's more connected. Um, but yeah, this is a very aggressive range. This is pretty much riding the line. Um, you wouldn't, I wouldn't fault you for pretty much shoving exactly this range, but something close to it. Um, you're certainly going here with any any pair, any ace, any suited king all all the time, even any suited queen all the time. Um, but yeah, th this seems pretty solid to me. Not really much I would change here. It's very aggressive, which of course I like in any shorthanded situation. I think that's the way to play it. Okay, here on to the next one. Same blind level. Um, looks like we have six five suited here. It is folded to us. We're in the button. Um, players in the blinds, uh, player in the small blind has 10 blinds in the big blind, uh, more than us, more than 15. Um, and we have about 12 blinds on the button. This is a spot where a lot of times on the bubble you'll hear me say that you'll be shoving a little deeper than you otherwise would to take a kind of a small guaranteed edge rather than put yourself in an exposed spot. Um, that is also certainly the case here. Um, the player under the gun is getting short. They have six blinds and they've folded. That's something to consider. They are the short stack, and it will make us be a little more passive than we might otherwise be. Uh, the presence of that short stack is already folded out. Now that said, um, they're not as short as in previous situations where they had you know two through maybe four or five lines. Six six blinds here is is a little more competitive. We really still need to be taking our shots and preserving our chips because if we fold out here waiting for the stack to blind out, uh, we may very soon find ourselves in a reverse position where we're that short stack. And that's what happens to a lot of players here with kind of a mid-sized stack. They get a little passive trying to outlast that player when really you still need to be playing aggressively up until the point where they're getting really short and about to blind down. Six blinds doesn't quite cut it here. We still need to be playing aggressively. Um, I would just open shove this hand. There's no hands here I'd probably make a small raise with. It. Twelve blinds on the bubble, uh, even especially on the button. I, I would say all shoves are folds and no limps, no small raises at all. Um, against players who don't know you, you might make small raises with big hands like aces and kings to entice action. Uh, but against anyone who's paying attention, I, I would recommend just blending it all together and shoving and folding. 6-5 uh, suited here is a shove as expected. Um, you know, you might, I, I don't know that I would go any looser than that really, but it, it's just a good indication of how loose you're really going. This range seems really solid to me. Um, Queen-5 suited is pretty loose, so is Jack-6 suited, um, and also 10-8 offsuit. 
Uh, it looks pretty solid otherwise. Any ace I would definitely go with here. I think king nine offsuit's a good line to draw. King four suit seems fine. Um, so yeah, it seems like a pretty solid range here. If anything, just slightly too loose with the jack six suited and, and uh, that's about it really. I, I like the rest of it. The ten eight offsuit again also slightly loose here, but rest of it's okay. Um, I did leave it to give us a little bit of an edge here. I didn't want to have a, a zero edge or a negative edge like I'll sometimes take to avoid the blinds because of the presence of that player under the gun there. We really want to do, uh, do have a little bit of a positive edge here. Okay, we have another heads up uh, shoving situation here. This time 300, 600 blinds. Uh, we are effectively 10 blinds deep. Um, we have 9-4 suited here. This is going to be a shove. It's one of those Nash equilibrium situations. Um, I even adjusted the opponent to call um, vastly wider than I think most people will, which should reduce your shoving range in this situation. And even having done that, adjusting it so that it's not really in our favor, this is still a shove, actually, just to show you. When you're 10 blinds deep and heads up, you're, you're shoving an extremely wide range. Um, and I didn't even adjust the edge here to, uh, I would say, take a zero or even slightly negative edge here. And even at the default edge recommended by Sit and Go Wizard of 89 chips here, um, you're still shoving 66% of hands, which includes 9-4 suited. Um, so if you if you were to take that edge down to zero, I can only imagine that um, you would probably sh could shove any two cards depending on the type of opponent you were up against. If they were someone who didn't really understand how loose you need to be calling in heads up, and they'd be folding hands like queen nine, you know, and like jack eight. If they're folding hands like that, you can shove any two. Uh, if you think you'll get called there sometimes, then I would ditch maybe the bottom. Uh, 10 to 20 percent of hands, things like nine deuce offsuit, a five four offsuit, things like that. And that's about it. But I would go with about anything else here. And nine four suited certainly qualifies. Okay, here's another one. Uh, this one's kind of interesting in that uh, the big blind is the big stack, and all three uh, players have essentially equal equity uh, before the blinds are posted here. Uh, we are under the gun with king eight offsuit. This, in some situations, would be a shove. Um, for instance, if we had the same number of chips, but some of the chips from the big blind were distributed among the other two players, like say they both had 3,000, and the big blind were still the big stack, um, at like 5,000 or so, um, that would be a spot where I would shove the king eight because we are entitled to take a few more risks being you know last in chips. Um, but here is a little different because uh, we really don't have that much incentive to take extra risk. We are under the gun. The blinds will hit us, but we're 10 blinds deep and there's no ante, so our chips aren't going to disappear that quickly. Um, the player who's most likely to call us is in a great position to call us. Um, I would recommend folding here. I'd probably go with king nine. Um, whoops. Uh, yeah, it looks like king nine is about right. Um, this range, again, seems pretty solid. Um, which I guess will generally be the case when the, the settings are adjusted approximately because of the ICM. Yeah, the, this seems pretty good to me. Um, I don't think I would shove Jack-5 suited here or Queen-4 suited. Um, I'd be more inclined to shove the suited King. You really want to err to the side of caution in this situation, I think, when you're equal. I, I allowed a small negative edge here, um, which is okay, but I might go a little tighter than this range for once, and I don't normally suggest that, but this is a good spot to, to air to the side of caution, I think. So I would even suggest pitching the bottom of the range, like the Jack-5 suited, the Queen-4 suited. Um, I think you'll be fine with most of it. Uh, Jack-9 offsuit is even okay. Queen-9 offsuit is okay. Wouldn't go any looser than that. Um, suited connectors all the way down to like 6-5 suited would be okay. Um, maybe like a 9-7 suited as well would be fine. Um, just to give you a general idea. But again, erring to the side of caution in situations where we really don't have that much incentive to take extra risk and the other players are approximately equal through us. And shoving through all of them is not the most ideal situation, even with a hand that's, you know, decent shorthanded like King 8. Okay, we have another heads up situation for you here. Um, 200, 400, and this time we're in the small blind uh, with Queen Deuce suited. Um, this is a pretty standard shove. Um, this isn't. The, I wouldn't even consider this that much of a borderline situation, really. Um, I know Queen Deuce suited is pretty mediocre hand, but when you get in heads up, 
um, in situations or such that, you know, letting the blinds go through you a few times will cause a, a huge diminishment in your stack and your chances. I I would shove this, um, probably the instant it showed up on the screen, I would shove in here. Um, I don't know exactly how deep the Nash chart suggests you can shove with the suited queen, but I would think it's probably a little deeper than 12 blinds, maybe like 14, um, even with the worst suited queens here. Um, and it looks like, yeah, the equity of pushing here is actually positive. We're not even taking a negative edge here. Um, Sit and Go Wizards is asking us to take a, an edge of 676 chips here to, in order to take a shove. But I would say at 12 blinds deep and heads up, you could probably take a zero edge and then start to take a slightly negative edge around 11 and 10. Um, so I would probably shove quite a bit wider than this range here. Um, not extremely wider, but it's saying 60.5%. I would suggest shoving something like 75% here um, at 12 blinds, uh, and then approaching 85% when you get uh, all the way up to any two cards when it gets down to 10 blinds, depending on your opponent. Okay, here's another one. Uh, this is a little different. A lot of times in heads up, uh, you'll find that you'll be short stacked enough that there's really no move other than shoving or folding because uh, with the total chips in play once you hit the 200-400 it's hard for either player to really be above 15 blinds. Uh, this is a pretty extreme example which sometimes occurs where both players have right at 15 maybe a little more um, and it does happen sometimes when the stacks are evenly distributed or maybe when you get to heads up at an earlier blind level because of an aggressive table. Um, this is a spot where you can profitably shove, but I would recommend not doing so. Um, it, it, a little over 15 blinds, you can start mixing in small raises with your hands. Uh, you'll still want to be making some open shoves as well. You'll have to blend it so that your opponent can't easily read your range and decide which hands you'd like uh, to be making those raises with and which ones you'd like to be shoving with. But this is a hand that you can really uh, successfully trap your opponent with. If you were to make a small raise and he shoves, you would be able to call almost any opponent here profitably. In fact, I would say pretty much any opponent um, who has any clue how to play heads up. Um, and so it's a great hand to trap with. It also plays well post-flop, and I would recommend the small raise here to like 850 or 900, just like two and a quarter. No reason to make it bigger than that. If, you, if you're unwilling to make a small raise, if you have to make it three or four X, then I would just shove it. Um, but here, this is a good spot to make a small raise and try to induce a re-steal. And I would do the same with some uh, weak hands as well, so that I don't have like a polarized range where I'm only raising big hands and, and shoving mediocre ones. You definitely want to uh, to blend that range so that players can't gain an advantage against you. But I would just recommend the small raise here against most players. Okay, it looks like we're three-handed here. Uh, in the money, but there is, as I've said before, a small bubble between the sec or third and second place here. And, and so uh, I would adjust for that slightly. It looks like uh, 200, 400, the player under the gun has five blinds and is folded out. We have right around 12 blinds in the small blind um, and is folded to us. This is close to, this is kind of like the, the, queen, the queen seven hand. Um, it's similar to it. Uh, and then we're really on the line here. Uh, this may be a hand that could be shoved uh, if the stacks were a little more equal and we had the same number of blinds effectively. Um, for instance, if the big blind, about 800 of their chips were moved over to the button, maybe I would shove it then uh, because the big blind would be less inclined to make that call with fewer chips behind. Um, this is probably going to be a fold here. Um, and it is right on the line as a fold. Uh, you really do want a slightly positive edge here because uh, the player who's about to go through the blinds is about to be eliminated. So I like the uh, edge the Sit and Go Wizard implies here. They suggested 58 chips are left alone. I thought it was a good recommendation. Um, and, and I think this range is pretty solid too. You should sure, certainly still be able to risk it with any pair and any ace and any suited king. Um, king 3 is fine. This This whole range really seems pretty solid here. Um, you could certainly make slight adjustments by adding in hands like Jack do suited and throwing out hands like King 3 offsuit. That would be a recommendation I would make. Um, it's always better to go with uh, the separated suited hand here rather than, you know, the King 3. Um, but this, this is a pretty good range here. You don't want to take unnecessary risk because of that player, but you should still be shoving fairly wide. Uh, and the, the main bubble is already gone, and so we're, we're not really looking for a huge prize increase here. Uh, just 10% difference between third and second, so we can take some risks. 
Okay, it looks like here we are the big stack under the gun in the 150-300. Um, looks like we have almost 20 blinds. Uh, player in the big blind has about 12 blinds and the small blind about 10. Uh, and the player on the button has about four blinds. So the players in the blinds are certainly going to be risk averse. Uh, they're aware of their situation in the tournament and they're about to cash. Uh, they're going to be less likely to get involved here. Um, the player on the button, four blinds deep, is pretty close to being eliminated. We will be shoving wider than we otherwise would. Uh, not really adjusting much for the blinds going through us. Our stack is deep enough that we're not really concerned with that, so that's not going to be something we need to really consider here. This is also kind of on the line. Um, I'm curious, yeah. This is a shove. Um, this is a really borderline shove, though. This is this is basically an abuse spot where you're able to shove hands that would otherwise be unprofitable just because of um, the situation with the button. Um, this, this is a pretty aggressive recommendation. Uh, I wouldn't fault anyone for doing it. This is a spot where you should err to the side of aggression as the chip leader uh, in this great position where the, the blinds uh, the blinds are risking the most, really, and those are the players most likely to call you. Um, the player on the button is going to fold some decent hands that he might otherwise want to get involved with if he were the last to act uh, because he's going to want to see if either of those players in the blinds will call you and be eliminated. Um, so you're getting some equity that way as well, and that's something to consider. Um, this range is fine. I would probably even add in King-5 offsuit here. Um, not really sure what suited connectors past, uh, like, probably 10-6 suited that they're saying, or 10-5 suited to go with here. Um, I imagine you can probably go with, like, a 9-6 suited, maybe even a 9-5 suited. Uh, nine seven offsuit would be fine. Uh, eight five suited would probably be in the range. Eight seven offsuit. Um, seven four suited. Seven six offsuit. Six four suited. Um, six five offsuit. Something like that here would be fine. Um, another heads up situation for you here. Uh, we are about. 15 blinds deep it looks like um, so we'll be making mostly open shoves at this stack depth um, so the question is is 8-4 suited strong enough to fold 15 blinds deep and heads up you might be surprised here um, it's really close eight, I think 8-5 suited is a shove and I think 8-4 suited is not I think it's where the line is drawn is why I picked this hand yeah um, and just to show you exactly how loose here you can go with this uh, you can shove I mean, any suited king, pretty much any suited queen. I would add in queen deuce suited. A lot of hands here you can you can really shove at this stack depth and heads up. Um, eight four suited will be a fold. This is actually a hand that you could make a small raise with. It's a good range blending hand because it's not quite good enough to shove, um, but it doesn't play horrible post flop either. And it, you'll hit a lot of flops and be well disguised. Um, plus, you might just steal it outright, and you always know what to do if they make a restill. You can just let it go. So this is a hand that I might make a small raise with and then fold to a restill. And I would also make that small raise with a hand like Ace-King here to induce the restill to trap. Um, so that's a good range blending hand. Uh, wouldn't make the open shove with it as suggested, um, but it's really borderline. Uh, so that, I think that's a good alternative example where we can add in hands that blend our range there. Because a lot of you are probably wondering, you know, if you're if you're raking those small raises, you know, with those big hands, which other hands are you making uh, the small raises with? And this would be an example of one. I might make it with like King Five through King Seven here as well. And I'd make it with like Ace King, King Jack hands. I would also be calling with, so my opponent can't really take advantage of that. Okay, here with the nines, we are on the bubble. This is a very strong hand to get on the bubble, and I chose this example specifically to 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 really kind of convince you to a situation I see a lot of players trap themselves in. Um, you are second in chips with uh, about 14 blinds, which is pretty good in this spot. Um, the other two players who are about to be eliminated have four and six blinds, uh, respectively, six and a half, something like that. And the player in the big blind has essentially all the other chips in play, um, and this will be very hard to eliminate. Uh, it is very likely to be aggressive back at you, even if it's a passive player by nature with this many chips uh, compared to the others. Uh, the shortest stack under the gun does fold out, which gives us a lot of incentive to either not get involved or limit the options of other players to put us in bad situations. Um, 
we like I said are 14 blinds deep here the vast majority of the time even at 14 blinds on the bubble I would recommend the small raise here with the nines this is a rare exception where the hand should be open shoved uh, you should even be open to shoving hands like tens and I would even say jacks here um, I know that seems extreme but if you make that raise and the player in the big blind shoves um, I think you can profitably call with jacks and maybe tens, probably not nines, believe it or not, because of the short stack depth of the player that's about to go through the blinds. I mean, even a hand like nines, which is very good, if you're not the aggressor, loses a lot of its uh, a lot of its strength because you know jack ten flips with you, and there's a lot of other just random hands that would flip with you here. Um, and even a hand that has you know 30% showdown equity, you still don't want to be showing down against when a player is this short and about to be eliminated. So just open shove the nine. Uh, open shove tens and jacks here as well. Um, hands bigger than that, you can make a small raise with, and then some, you know, junk hands as well to kind of blend it. Um, mostly wanting to avoid getting involved here, though. I wouldn't be raising too many hands that you're not willing to commit your whole stack with here. In general, avoid that in this situation. But yeah, just open shove the nines and don't give the player in the big blind a chance to come back at you here, which is what a lot of good regs would do in this situation with almost any two cards. Alright, so that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed that. I tried to pick some good examples of trouble spots where I think a lot of you have difficulty, and hopefully that'll help. Uh, further videos coming out in this series soon. We will be focusing on the six max shove in the next few. Alright, hope you enjoyed that, and take care.